Shalom, everyone. This is Mike Sutcliffe, the online ministries pastor here at Corner Fringe Ministries. Thank you for joining me again today as we continue to count the Omer together in 2023. Today is week three, and it's day 18. We're quickly moving through the Psalm 119, which most people don't really spend time reading. So I'm grateful that you've chosen to, to join me each day as we journey together through this psalm. Today we're going to look at verses of 137 through 144, which open up with the Hebrew letter Sade. Now, what is Sade? Well, this is the 18th letter in the Hebrew alphabet, and it comes from a root of the word that means to capture. The word Sade also comes from, also shares in the word Sadiq, which means righteousness, honesty, uprightness, pious, and correct. And I can honestly tell you that those two things together describe this psalm to me because it is God's righteousness that captured my heart. And I hope that as we walk through it together, and that we can clarify some things for both of us. All right, so let's take a look at the text. Today we're going to look at Psalm uh, 119, verses 137 through 144 that read, Sade, righteous are you, O Lord, and upright are your judgments. You have commanded your testimonies in righteousness and exceeding faithfulness. My zeal has consumed me because adversaries have forgotten your word. Your word is very pure, therefore your servant loves it. I am small and despised, yet I do not forget your precepts. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your law is truth. Trouble and anguish have come upon me. Your commandments are my delight. Your testimonies are righteous forever. Give me understanding that I may live. Let me ask you a question. When you read this psalm, do you see Yeshua? Because that's what you should be seeing as you read it. I've seen the words law, truth, righteous, and precept. I've also seen the idea that it's eternal. This is so important for us to wrestle through as we look at this. This word righteous, what does it mean to you? Some people believe that they can be righteous by themselves, and maybe it's something that they believe is is a uh, is something that they do, right? Or or how they go about their living or their lives. You know, we might use the word good in place of righteous, but righteous is in a legal manner. And what we understand here is according to God's law, his Torah, that he alone is righteous. Now, who else do we know is righteous? Well, we know that Yeshua is righteous because he and the Father are one. But when we become saved by the blood of Messiah, we are righteous by his righteousness. It's such an interesting concept to me. But let's walk through this psalm together and see if we get it. It says here, righteous are you, O Lord, meaning that he alone is righteous and upright are your judgments. As the king Every decision that a king makes, every judgment that he makes is, in this case, perfect. It is according to God's law. That's the standard for righteous. Now, this is the issue here because when you look at the word Sadiq, one of the most interesting descriptions that I got of it, I got for it, was the idea that this was the norm when the Bible was written. What does that mean? It means that the people... The community, the nation, accepted God's rulings, his Torah, as normal. Now, we live in a society today that doesn't do that. So normal is whatever normal thinks, and it seems to change on a daily basis, sometimes more frequently than that. So what is normal yesterday is not normal today, and what is normal today is not normal tomorrow. Frankly, that drives me crazy. I prefer and love and appreciate living and serving a God who is eternal, not only in being, but his judgments and his commandments. And so when I study this, his norm is now my norm. He says that you have commanded your testimonies in righteousness and exceeding faithfulness. He is, it's all about the Lord. Every bit of this, faithfulness, testimonies, righteousness, judgments, all is described in that very first word that says, Righteous are you, O Lord. My zeal has consumed me because my adversaries have forgotten your words. 
what does that tell me? It tells me that at some point they knew the words, but now they have forgotten them. They have put them away. What does that say? I mean, we live in a country here in America where we used to be what we would call a Christian nation filled with Christians who went to church and worshiped and celebrated and and did a, their way of living out their faith honoring God. Somewhere along the line though we have forgotten his word. Maybe it was when we drove him out of our schools. Maybe it was when we drove him out of the workplace or maybe it's when we drove him out of the public square. During COVID one of the things that I learned is that God was limited by man, not by his own power. We wanted nothing to do with him except for during the church, during our time of worship. And what did COVID do? It shut down the church. We have, in effect, because we have accepted the nation, the world standard of norm, we have literally pushed God away from us. And this is what he's talking about. God is faithful. Regardless of what we do, God is still God. He says here that your word is pure and therefore your servant loves it. Keep in mind the relationship that King David is establishing. That the God of the God most high, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is king over all. And as such, David himself is calling himself a servant. This is not um, being uh, false humility. This is literally a man who recognizes God for who he is. Do you and I do that in our lives? Is God king over our decisions? Does his rulings and his judgments and his commandments guide the way we live our lives? If so, then you and I are servants of the Most High, and we love it. Now, he goes on to say that your righteousness is everlasting righteousness and your law is truth. So would that tell you anywhere in that particular passage that the scripture has changed? When I think about Yeshua and I think about who is the truth, it is Yeshua. And when we say that he is the, the way, the truth, and the life, what he's telling us is that we must understand that he is not apart from the Father, and every word that Moses has written in the Old Testament, every word in the Scripture, all Scripture is God-breathed, as Paul wrote in Timothy, is about Yeshua, every bit of it. And so it also says that it is an everlasting righteousness. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are eternally existent, and such adds that to make their word totally are eternally existent as well. He goes on to say here, trouble and anguish have come upon me, yet your commandments are my delight. You know, that is my life in a nutshell before Messiah. I had lived a life away from God's word, not because I, I fully understood God's word, but somewhere along the line, I was deceived into believing that, you know what? It didn't really matter. It didn't apply. God's rules were a burden. His commandments were not something that any man should have to suffer. But when I began to understand my need for a Savior and called out to be saved, His commandments became my delight. This word delight also means fellowship. It's the idea of this is how I communicate and have an intimate relationship with God is through His commandments. Your testimonies are righteous forever. Give me understanding that I may live. You know, I, I've, I've often heard it said that, especially for those of us who are Gentile believers in the Jewish uh, Messiah, Yeshua, that we aren't always, we don't have to follow God's commandments, that his laws are not for us, that they don't apply to 2023 like they applied when they were written in, in, the, early, uh, in the early first century or before that. But what I ha I want to point out today is that when Yeshua says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, he does not and could not and would not present different commandments than the Father has. But there's a key word in this particular passage that we've seen coming up over and over again, and that word is precept. The precept of all of God's Torah is love, and it's this love, it is this love that God shows us that draws us to come near to the Father. His law does that. His commandments do that. It is um, this law, this precept of this law that causes me to turn 
from my sins, to repent of my wicked ways. It is this law, this love that makes me recognize that my own sin has prevented me from entering into the kingdom of God. It is also this love that has shown me that I must also share that same love with others in my life. Friends, I hope that as you study the psalm with me, and you're also not only picking up the idea that God's law is perfect and eternal, it hasn't changed, that Yeshua is the law. He is the exact replica of God the Father who came in the flesh so that we might know God more intimately. But he also is a way for us to understand how we are to love our neighbors as ourselves and fulfill the Great Commission. Friends, I hope that you uh, you learned something from today. This is like the fourth time I've had to record today's video. So keep praying for my computer and every Everything going on here, friends, because I am excited about what the Lord is showing me, and I'm encouraged that you continue to join me. I hope I'll see you tomorrow as we continue our study through Psalm 119. We're coming close to the end, and we're going to be looking at Psalm 119, verses 145 through 152, and we will be in day 19 of week 3. Until tomorrow, everyone. Shalom.